Good evening, Ajax Lighthouse family, and welcome to this Saturday, May 2nd edition of uh, Ajax Lighthouse Online. Hope you've all had a, a wonderful week, a safe week, have, and you've all uh, been able to stay healthy. Uh, under these circumstances, I pray that we'll all, we're all uh, keeping well, of sound mind, and just remember that, uh, that if we remain steadfast under this trial, uh, we will come through uh, victorious on the other side. As uh, Keith Green's song says, it'll be a trial turned to gold. So our announcements this week are pretty much the same. Uh, today, Oliver will be bringing the message uh, from James 1, finishing it off, uh, that's verses 19 to 27. And then next week, David will begin in James 2. Uh, and the following week, he will be uh, completing James 2. So pretty straightforward. Uh, again, uh, we will uh, just be heading over to Noel and Grace following these announcements. Uh, then following up with uh, God's stories with David and then I'll have a just a closing word uh, at the end to close us out for this week. But before we head over to Nolan Grace, let's uh, seek the Lord to open this time together in prayer. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Father, we thank you again for bringing us to this week, to this time together uh, where we can virtually study your word and although we are not physically together Lord we know that uh, as we are all gathered you are with us and I just pray to that and that you will continually guide us all help us to persevere through these uh, unique circumstances and times that we are in. I just pray for uh, this this uh, evening's uh, service they be with Nolan Grace as they uh, bring the worship uh, time that you would just lead them, use them as your instruments, and also for Oliver, again, that you would just use him as your instrument, writing your, your truths, proclaiming them to us clearly. You would just uh, help him to uh, just remain focused and, and be able to um, clearly expound on your word. We just thank you again uh, for these things and I pray that uh, you would be with each member of the Lighthouse, whatever they may be going through, whatever difficulties uh, they may be having or um, any uh, sickness or just uh, just struggle with the uh, social distancing, not being able to uh, see family and friends. I just pray that you would uh, just give them peace that is beyond understanding knowing that your peace is all that we need your hope your your salvation is what we need uh, in these times Lord I just thank you for all these things and now ask them all in that most precious and wonderful name amen all right and now off to Nolan Grace take it away guys Hi, Jack's Lighthouse. welcome to our live stream and before we start our worship for this evening, thank you, Joseph, for the greetings and um, uh, the welcoming remarks. Um, so now we invite you to worship with us, and Noel will open us up in prayer. Great. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that we have to worship and glorify you. We ask that our worship will be acceptable before you, and that we will worship you in spirit and truth. Thank you so much for this time. Once again, we just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our first song, Word of God. Yeah. 
your Bibles handy, um, I would like you to lift them up as we sing the song, Ancient Words. worshiping with us. Now we bring you over to Joseph. Thank you, Noel and Grace, for uh, leading us so wonderfully in, uh, in tonight's praise and worship, as you do every week, and just helping us to prepare our hearts and minds for the theme of the evening and, and for the message. I have to admit, I miss playing with you guys, and, uh, and I do really miss singing corporately with uh, the entire Lighthouse. Look forward to the day when we can all... Um, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord together. Okay, now for tonight's scripture reading. So if you would please uh, turn to James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. That's James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. And while you're doing that, hopefully you've had uh, the opportunity to read through that this, this week, whether today or um, sometime uh, previously, uh, just to be able to... Uh, meditate on it and, and, and pray about it. Um, again, I'll remind you uh, as often as I do this uh, to do just that, to take that time um, so that you can really prepare your heart and, and ask God to speak to you through the, the person who will be uh, bringing 
the message that following Saturday. So, once again, James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. Let's read. Know this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Blessed be God's word. Oliver? Thank you so much, Joseph, for reading the scripture for today. Welcome to the Ajax Lighthouse, everyone. Thank you for joining us online. Today, we're going to be continuing our study in the book of James. Last week, we focused on the first half of James 1, verses 1 to 18. If you missed it, there's a new link at the top right-hand corner of the streaming page where you can access our previous services. Or if you're on an Android or iPhone device, you can uh, click the three bars at the top left-hand corner and you'll get the same link. Today, we'll be in James 1, verse 19 to 27. And my apologies to all. I had to make some adjustments to the sermon, so I ended up changing the, the original title. So the new title for today's message is simply, Hearing and Doing the Word. So this is the third week of our online Ajax Lighthouse service. With the COVID-19 pandemic still affecting us, our plans is to continue online services until we are safe to meet again. I can say that Marie and I definitely miss you all. We miss all the potlucks, the family and the friends, worshiping together as Ajax Lighthouse, family of families. And I can say it's not the same preaching to a camera. But as one of the comments that was said during last week's service, amen to technology. And what an even greater blessing that we have others join us online to hear the word. But today, we're going to be discussing a topic that we are all kind of guilty of doing, even without us noticing sometimes. We hear the word, and maybe we hear it online, and think it's enough. But James today will tell us that we are deceived if we think that's enough. James says that we must be both hearers of the word and also doers of the word. We'll be going through three sections of the scripture today. Verses 19 to 21, James will tell us that we need to be hearers of the word. Verses 22 to 25, James will let us know that we must be doers of the word. Verse 26 to 27, James will give us examples of what hearing and doing the word looks like when it's in action. I'll be asking a few questions throughout today's message, so if you are taking notes, now is the time to bring out your notebooks and your pens or electronic devices. Let's open the word to James 1, starting in verse 19. But before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, please guide us tonight as we receive your word. Please help us understand how we must be hearers and doers of your word. May our hearts be open, Lord, and may we have ears to hear your word. May your Holy Spirit, fill our hearts tonight. Please guide us as I preach your word tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so for the first section, we're going to be looking at tonight is verses 19 to 21, where James tells us to be hearers of the word. Verses uh, 19 to 21, it goes, Know this, my beloved brothers. 
Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is, ab which is able to save your souls. See, James is telling us that what's, what's really important, put away all filthiness and wickedness. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But how are we going to receive the word? We must first hear the word. And you can't receive if you don't hear. Verse 19, James tells us we must, number one, be quick to hear. Our ears need to be open. And we need to be hearing the word. I prayed this uh, well, before we started about having our ears to be open. Now, one of these things we must be aware is that it's hard to hear if we're talking all the time. Um, Everyone knows someone that uh, likes to talk on the phone, and it's very difficult uh, to, um, I guess, when they're uh, when you're communicating with them because it's like it's a, it seems like it's a one way com communication. And sometimes, if you have your phone, you're talking to them. You can actually put the phone down for maybe five to ten minutes, and then come back and pick it up. And the person that you're talking to probably doesn't even realize that you weren't on the phone. That person. Is definitely not listening because they are talking too much so that's why James says we should be slow to speak like speaking too much prevents you from listening just like that phone example we're talking about so when James then says he tells us that we should be slow to anger for it's almost impossible for us to listen when we're angry verse 20 it says, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Our anger is usually self-driven. The next time you're angry, check yourself and the words that are coming out of your mouth. The Bible says that out of the excess of your heart, the mouth speaks. So you can tell what's in your heart by the words you say. So this is the first section. James tells us that in order for us to receive the word, we must be quick to hear the word. So be hearers of the word. Let's move on to the second section, verse 22 to 25, where James instructs us to be doers of the word. Verse 22, it says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So James is saying, we then must not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. So if you think hearing the word only is enough, you're deceived. It's got to be both. Let's read uh, verses 23 to 25. And it says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. So, um, James is talking about a mirror here, and this mirror shows us a reflection of what we physically look like. There could be good things to be thankful for. For example, um, my, the hair that I have. I'm so thankful that I have thick hair and I, I thank my parents for, for the genes. But, but most of the time, we look in the mirror to identify things that we need to fix. So the practical part of the mirror is that we're looking into this mirror to show us something so that we can do something to correct the situation. What James is saying here is that if we are hearers only, it's like us looking into the mirror and finding imperfections and just doing nothing about it. We end up going away and forgetting our condition. Now, this is a physical mirror we're talking about, but I want to show you something, a spiritual mirror. And, and it's right here. It's, it's the Bible. It's, it's the Word of God. 
The Bible is our spiritual mirror. And the Bible is the word that shows us the condition of our spiritual life. Not only does it reveal to us the goodness of God, but it also reveals all our spiritual defects and imperfections. If we're hearers only, it'll be like us looking and seeing the imperfections revealed to us through the Bible and then doing nothing and then going away immediately, forgetting the condition that we're in. Does that sound like church sometimes? Well, none of us are gathered at church right now because of COVID-19, but when we hear the word through a sermon online or even at today's Ajax Lighthouse, we sometimes automatically default to becoming satisfied as hearers of the word only because we think it's enough. But James says that we are deceived if we think this. James says we got to be doers who look into the mirror to see how far away we are from the perfect law, which is the Bible, so that we can persevere as doers who act. James says, this is the person that will be blessed. In Matthew 7, 24 to 7, Jesus actually tells us a parable about wise and foolish builders. Um, let's turn, I'm going to turn there and I'm just going to read it to you guys. It says, and this is Jesus speaking, he says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. And when the rain fell and the floods came and all the winds blew and beat on that house, it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And when the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house, it fell. And how great was the fall of it. So Jesus tells us here that there's a wise builder that builds his house on rock. And he's the one that's the hearer and the doer of the word. This house was able to withstand the storm. The foolish builder that built his house on sand was a hearer of the word, but he was not a doer. His house was not able to stand the storm. And I can't help but to wonder here if, if Jesus is talking about this house, which is our, our faith or our life. And um, when we are just hearers of the word, um, we end up building our, our, our life, our faith on, on sand because we're foolish, because we only hear the word. But if we are wise and we, we hear the word and we do the word, it's like building our house, our life on, on, on solid rock. And uh, the storm that Jesus is talking that comes and knocks the, the house down that's in the sand and the, the one that's in the, the rock that, that's able to withstand, that could possibly be our, our, um, our trials that we were talking about last week. So let's look at a question. If we look at ourselves in the mirror, are you a hearer and a doer of the word? Or are you a hearer only of the word? Let's move into the last section of Scripture today, where James gives us an example of what it looks like when we become hearers and doers of the Word. Let's read verse 26. It says, if, everyone, if anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. So we need to bridle our tongue. For those that don't know what a bridle is, it's a device that they put over a horse's head. And um, what it does is it allows you to control the horse. Uh, and interesting enough, how James use, uses this analogy with a horse and our tongue. A horse has lots of power. Even today, when we measure how powerful our cars are, we measure it in horsepower. But what use is it? if all this power is not under control. It's the same as our tongues. Our tongues have so much power to build up or tear down people. If it's not bridled or under control, what good is it? James says this person's heart is deceived 
and their religion is worthless. Let's read verse 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God. The Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. What James is showing us here is that when hearing and doing the word is in action, this is true religion. And it looks like this. Number one, your tongue is bridled and you're under control, even in anger. Number two, you care for the needy in their affliction. Affliction means pain or suffering. In biblical times, widows and orphans were society's most helpless people. So James mentions them as examples. But we know today that this list is much larger. The poor, the hungry, the homeless, the elderly, the list goes on. Number three, James says that we are to keep ourselves unstained from the world. It means that we are to seek personal holiness and to seek purity and not conform to the world, but renew our minds. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, and that, by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So a few questions before we move on. Question one, do I bridle my tongue, even in times of anger? And what are some of the ways that we can care for the needy for today? Number, and the, the next question, what are some of the things that we can do to keep unstained from the world? Let's wrap up for tonight. So today's message, James tells us that we must be both hearers and doers of the word. He tells us that by hearing the word only is not enough. If we're just hearing the word and not doing, we are actually deceived. We're just looking in the mirror and we know what needs to be fixed, but we don't do anything and we just end up walking away and forgetting it. If you, are, if you are a hearer of the word and a doer of the word who acts, James tells us that you are blessed. James then gives us an example of what it looks like when we become hearers and doers of the word. Number one, we bridle our tongue. We ensure our speech is under control, even in anger. Number two, we care for the needy in their affliction. And number three, we remain unstained from the world. So we don't conform to the world and we seek personal holiness and purity. So before we end the night, I want to read what God says about his very own written words in the Bible. It says, uh, It says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong with our lives. It straightens us out and teaches us to do what is right. So, to my Ajax Lighthouse family and everyone else there on the internet, I am glad that we're able to hear the word together tonight. But we all know that hearing is not enough. The rest is up to you then to take the word that you heard today and not only be hearers of the word, but also be doers of the word. May God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to honor you, to worship you, and to learn your word tonight. Thank you for our Ajax Lighthouse family of families. Thank you for the truth of your word. And I pray that tonight the word will convict us and soften our hearts. May we not only be hearers of the word, Lord, but may we also be doers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Oliver. And thank you for the past two weeks. We have been truly blessed by your messages in uh, from James chapter 1. And thank you everybody who can uh, join us for our online services this week. Thank you for being faithful in uh, your attendance and being able to encourage each other. 
And related to that, I'd like to share God's story about Oliver's friend who was able to attend our online services last week. He has been uh, undergoing um, a separation from his wife, very difficult for their two children. And uh, this COVID-19 has uh, uh, made that uh, situation a bit worse, but uh, he was able to uh, join our online services and was encouraged to seek God. It is truly amazing how um, our online services are reaching people, reaching people um, like Oliver's friend and reaching folks um, that may not be able to come all the way here to Ajax uh, had we been meeting face to face. But thank you so much again for uh, just your, your attendance and your encouragement. And this week, as we continue in prayer, please, please remember uh, this COVID-19 situation that we're still in. Um, thinking of Anthony and uh, co-workers in uh, self-isolation. Uh, continue to pray for um, Marina and Amabel, who've uh, lost relatives to uh, COVID-19 and old age homes. Um, uh, last week, we had a special uh, prayer request uh, from Swapan Kundu, which we continue this week for uh, Bengal, India, and the lockdown situation going on there. As I mentioned last week, they encourage each other by phone only, and it's a very challenging uh, uh, method of being able to reach people. Um, of course, our frontline workers, especially um, Joseph and Sarah and Tara, as well as Roxy. And uh, new this week is uh, Allison, who is uh, Roxy's friend. Um, who's tested positive for COVID-19. Please pray for that situation for sure. And continue to guide our leaders in our country as we go through this uh, pandemic. Um, and please continue to pray for um, Sarah's cousin, Wes. Uh, we um, mentioned him last week and the loss of, uh, of um, uh, his wife, Tova, and... Um, you know, it, especially during the situation where it's very uh, tough to uh, have uh, have relatives uh, uh, pass away. And uh, I know somebody at work who's not able to actually um, meet with his family because of a death, uh, because he cannot travel. Um, continue to work for, uh, continue to pray for Oliver's work promotion opportunity and um, uh, health and sickness uh, situations here with uh, uh, Jamie, uh, a special request from Rob Taylor, uh, a 15-year-old friend of uh, their granddaughter who has stage 4 cancer, very, very young to have cancer. And uh, Ben, Ben is uh, uh, now in the hospital. Um, the latest we've heard is um, he's still very weak, um, but he's... Um, responding well to a uh, fluid infusion. So please continue to pray for Ben and of course, Lily uh, and then Christine. Relationships at this time, like Oliver's uncle James, uh, of course, families living in separation who might not be able to join each other yet, um, as well as salvation for the lost. And this, this time is probably a good time to reach out to people because uh, People are realizing the, their own mortality and, and see the deaths going on, uh, especially in the news, and maybe makes them think more of uh, God and uh, in this whole situation. And, and um, please pray for uh, salvation for our friends, our families, and continue to pray for uh, Ajax Lighthouse. Again, thank you for, for uh, attending. Thank you for being, joining us uh, in our online services. That, uh, you've, uh, that we remain committed and faithful. And uh, please, dear God, guide us. Uh, I hope that is your prayer. And please, please, um, just continue to encourage one another, maybe through um, text messages or phone calls um, uh, um, and joining our online services. Uh, don't be, let's not be weary in, in doing good. Like James said, um, we shouldn't be hearers of the word, but 
not only hearers of the word, but uh, rather doers as well. And we've, uh, we will continue the messages on uh, James, uh, the book of James uh, next week as well. Um, and for now, I will turn you over to uh, Joseph for uh, closing prayers and any last minute announcements. Thank you. Thank you, David, for leading us so compassionately and caringly through uh, our weekly God stories and just uh, for the attention that you give to that. Well, that concludes our evening. Once again, thank you for joining us. And uh, I just pray that uh, the Lord would bless you and keep you, that the Lord would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this coming week. We all love you and we thank you again. Good night.